Hey everyone, this is David Pike, the Motor City Mechanic. Now today's video is a two-parter. We're going to be dealing with removing and replacing the rocker arms and lifters on a Chrysler 3.2 and 3.6 liter Pentastar engine. You find this in Chrysler's Dodge, Jeeps, and Rams, as well as one Volkswagen. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Now this is the Chrysler 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 engine. It's an overhead cam design and has a total of four camshafts. Now in the video, you're gonna hear me say 3.6 over and over and over again. But there's another engine that's very similar to this and that's a 3.2 liter. Smaller displacement, but everything that you see in this video will pertain to the 3.2. So even though I might not mention it, remember everything is the same. Now also in previous videos I showed you how to remove the upper intake either when we were replacing spark plugs or possibly the oil cooler or filter assembly. We're not going to be doing that in this video because this engine is the common V6. It's in everything that Chrysler makes. So every intake is slightly different. So this isn't a one size fits all. So if that, if you need to learn how to remove the upper intake, go through the video library and find the appropriate video for that. Otherwise, we're going to jump straight into the valve train. Once you take the upper intake off, everything else is pretty much the same. Now, a common failure that we have with these engines is a ticking sound or a misfire code related to a bad roller rocker. The roller rocker has needle bearings and they will fail over a period of time. Now, there is no specific mileage when it usually happens and there's really no specific generation or engine year that I see this on. I see it across the board and it's just a matter of time before some of them start doing it. And then there's some that never have a problem. The main thing is you wanna kinda of isolate which side of the engine the noise is coming from. Depending on how long you've been driving, typically it should just be one side. But again, if you've been putting this off, you could have noise from both sides. So typically you can actually listen to either side with your ear and you can isolate it that way. If not, you grab one of these mechanic stethoscopes. These work great. That way you can actually pinpoint which side. So then you know exactly what you need to take apart. Now, once you tear it down, now there's a couple things we're gonna be talking about a little bit further in the video and that is what do you need to replace and how much or how many do you need to replace at the same time? Now there's basically two different ways of replacing the rock arms on that 3.6 liter. There's the way I do it, which I consider to be the right way or by the book. And then there's some shortcuts that other people use that I like to call the wrong way. Now a lot of them use that method because they don't want to buy the special tools. But the thing is the special tools aren't that expensive. Everything you see right here is around $20 on Amazon. So there's no reason to not do the buy the book method. There's a chance that you could damage something by using these shortcuts. And I'll show you what they are when we go through this video. And I wanna show you the proper way to use these tools. Now everything you see right here comes in that special tool kit. Each item has a different purpose. And some of these we have multiples of because they're only intended for a specific year and there's slight differences. These wedges right here, very important. We actually insert those between the exhaust and intake cam phaser slash sprockets. There's a left side and a right side. Once inserted and everything's lined up, we can actually have the cams locked together so we can break that oil control valve or the large bolt on the front. We can break it loose for removal and we can reinstall and torque it down on reassembly. I also like to use these to suspend those cam sprockets. I can actually back them off slightly with the chain still attached and it gives me enough clearance to remove the camshaft. Now over here, we've got different wedges that we use. These will actually be pressed against the chain guide and they will actually press up against the hydraulic tensioners. Some of them actually work differently, but nonetheless, once they're compressed slightly, it gives us that necessary slack we need for pulling the cam phasers off. These are for the right side, that one over there is for the left side. And like I said, this one over here is for 2011 only. This one is 12 and up. Now these right here are specifically for the variable valve timing, VVT engines. Later model 36s had variable valve timing and variable valve lift. They use a completely different set. They look similar, but some of them are actually metal and not plastic, and the wedges are also different. So with that, we're ready to go ahead and move on to removing the upper intake. Now we're gonna talk about some specifics related to the valve covers themselves. Now if the upper intake removed, we need to cover up the lower intake ports. We don't want anything falling inside while we're working on it. Now this engine's on a stand, so throughout this video, you're not gonna see anything covering this up, but it's a good practice when you're doing it to either get some tape or some rags 
and cover each one of the ports up. Now bolted to the front of both of these valve covers, we've got these solenoid slash actuators and they've got to do with the variable valve timing. It's recommended to remove these before removing the valve cover. Now they also want you to mark where each one came. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get a paint marker. I'm just going to do something simple. I'll put one dot for this one. I'll put two dots for this one. And I'll go on down the line. And then I know, going from left to right, which one was which. Now each one of these has three fasteners and they are T25 Torx. Go ahead and back those off. Try best not to lose them. And then you're just going to grab them and wiggle them off. There's a rubber seal. It may stay right here in the groove of the valve cover or it may come off with that actuator. And right here you can see that little pin I was telling you about that actually protrudes through and it pushes on this valve on the oil control valve right here that's on front of that cam phaser. And all we're going to do is repeat it on down the line. Now the removal of the valve cover is pretty cut and dry. You've got bolts around the perimeter. Obviously you've got these coal packs you've got to unbolt and position them out of the way. We've got a cam position sensor that bolts directly here. And there's one other thing that makes it different between left and right side and that has to do with the PCV valve. Now the PCV valve will always be on the right side of the engine or passenger side. It just depends on the make and model. Nonetheless, it's always this valve cover. And the reason why we gotta pay attention to this is we've gotta remove it because it actually slides on the end of one of those camshafts. So we will not be able to remove the valve cover because of that. Now it's attached with two T25 torque screws just like the actuators on the front. Thing is, it's a bit hard to get to depending on the vehicle. Front wheel drive vehicles, it's very easy. Rear wheel drives, it can actually be a big issue, especially on the Jeep Wranglers. Luckily for me, I can get up in here with this impact. Otherwise, the best tool I found that works on the other vehicles is just a bit, T25 bit, and one of these small little ratcheting wrenches. Now once all the fasteners are removed, we're just gonna wiggle it to break it loose. There's a rubber seal that sits in a groove on the PCV valve. There is no groove on the valve cover. As you can see on this circular portion right here, that slides up in there and goes onto that exhaust camshaft. So that's why we're removing it. Now at this point, we're ready to go ahead and remove that left side valve cover. Now it's going to want to stick in place because we use RTV here and here where the cylinder head and timing cover meets. There's a seam, so we actually smear a little bit of RTV. We put the valve cover down, torque it down, and that makes a good sealing surface. Again, it's going to want to stick right here. Typically what I do is I just grab a flat tip screwdriver. Remember this is made out of plastic, be gentle. And I usually just get up onto one of the edges and break it loose. Now lucky for us, we don't have the PCV valve. All we gotta do is lift straight up as long as we've got all the brackets and all the hoses and wiring out of the way. Now on the right side, the main thing you need to pay attention to is when you go lift up, there's gonna be something that stops you at the rear. And that's because where that PCV valve went on, that part of the cam actually protrudes through that opening slightly on the end. So it's actually gonna hit coming up. Again, we're gonna break it loose because of the RTV that's in the corners. And this time when you pick up, you're gonna pick up slightly and you're gonna go back a little bit and then you're gonna clear that camshaft. So now that the valve cover's out of the way, we can actually point out some important details. Now the cam sprockets or phasers are attached to the camshaft using this big bolt. This bolt is called the oil control valve. Remember, solenoid pushes on this valve. That wedge I showed you before, we're gonna be inserting it right between here. Once we've got all the timing marks lined up, we're gonna work it in there. Once we do that, we got a socket we're gonna be using to break these loose. Same thing going back, we'll use that wedge, torque it down the spec. We're gonna leave that wedge in place because we're gonna actually just kind of work one of the phasers off at a time. We're gonna do one camshaft, then once we're done, we'll reinstall it, then we'll do the other. So at no time do we take both of them loose. So by using that wedge, we can suspend that cam phaser right here in the air. It's kind of wedged to this side, and we've taken some of the tension off the chain. Now the other special tools come into play. And again, it's different for the left and right side. And we're gonna show you that in just a second. Now the other thing I want to point out is, this is an overhead cam design. We've got a total of four camshafts. We've got two exhausts. This is one of them right here, and we've got two intake. Now being that these are overhead cams, that means everything's basically below it. 
we've got a rocker arm that's directly below each one of the cam lobes and in a passage in the head we've got a lifter that the rocker arm makes contact with we've got to remove the camshaft to do it the right way in order to get to those rocker arms and lifters but there's one other thing i want to talk about before we actually get into this repair and that is what i talked about in the beginning what are we going to replace and how many are we so remember we tore this down for a reason we either got a misfire a noise or all the above if it was a noise hopefully you diagnosed it to which side it is and that's the side you tore apart now for the sake of argument let's say it's this left side or driver's side we've taken it apart we found the play we found which one of the rocker arms is messed up now what do you do do you replace just that one rocker arm right there i want to go ahead and cut you off and say no don't just replace one there are 24 in this engine there's 12 on this side alone that one fell there's a chance that another one will so at least at the bare minimum do the 12 on the side you've got torn apart if you can afford it there is some additional time in doing it do the other side so knock out all 24 if possible also while we're in there do we replace the lifters now the rock arms are a common failure. They revise that part over and over again. The lifters have the same part number from day one. It's not a common failure point, but I have seen a few go out over the years. So I would say if you can afford it again, replace all 24 lifters while it's apart. Now the camshafts are another story. And I did an in-depth video just on that. And I'll put a link up here in the corner. Watch that video. It's gonna tell you if the damage that you see actually warrants replacing of that camshaft. In some cases, yes. Other cases, no. Each one of these camshafts is $300. Typically, you only see one that's got damage, but if it's been driven for a long period of time, you may see more than one. So keep that in mind. I'd rather you save that $300, make sure to watch that video. You actually learn a lot. So that brings me to the other two methods that people commonly use if you've watched different videos on YouTube. The main one is they like to back off all the fasteners that hold the cam bearing caps to the cylinder head. And as they start taking them off, once you get towards the front, that camshaft will start picking up slightly. There's tension right here with the chain. You got the hydraulic tensioner applying force. It actually will pick it up slightly and they can kind of work a bad rocker arm out. Typically it's easier for the rear. As you get towards the front, it may be more difficult. Issue with that is cylinder head is aluminum. The cam bearing caps, the fasteners going down, there's not a lot of torque on it. These fasteners and the threads are not designed to pull a camshaft back down under that tension. They're actually designed just to fasten the caps. There's not a lot of torque there. You could damage the threads in there. You either have the helicoil or replace the cylinder head. So again, I don't recommend that method. The other thing is some people like to grab a pry bar or something to get down in here. And they like to wedge up against the valve spring and push it down. Problem you run into there is the keepers could fall off you could damage something else as well. And usually again, both of these methods, they're only replacing one rock arm. They're not messing with the lifters. They're only replacing the one and putting everything back together, keeping their fingers crossed that they don't have the issue again. Now, before we go taking things off so that we can get to those rock arms, there's an important step you need to remember. We need to get these timing chains and these marks on the cams in a certain location. And we're gonna be doing that by rotating the balancer or the crankshaft. Now there's different marks on the front of these cam phasers. We've got arrows, we've got lines, we've got initials for intake and exhaust. And we've also got alignment marks or holes on top of the cam shafts. So as we're rotating it, we're gonna be looking for different things to line up. And what we're looking for is gonna be different on the right side versus the left side. But there's a very simple thing if you pay attention to that will make this a whole lot easier for you. And that is the alignment holes on the cam shaft. Let me show you those. Now at the factory, they actually machined holes into the camshaft and they use that for alignment purposes. The ones up here towards the front aren't really that important. It's the ones down here in the middle that we're gonna be looking for. As we're rotating it over, you're gonna see these holes start coming into frame. What we're looking for is four holes. We got the two right here. As we rotate it over again, we're gonna see two more holes and then we're gonna see two right here. When we got all four holes, perpendicular with the deck of the head, we know that we're getting close to the timing marks that we need to pay attention to at the front on the cam phaser. So let's go ahead and start spinning it over by the crankshaft and actually start looking for these holes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our one and one sixteenth socket, long breaker bar or ratchet, and start rotating. And as we're spinning it, we're gonna pay attention to those camshafts. Let's keep going. It should start getting ready to show up. And there you go. Let's get them around 90 degrees. That's about right there. 
So there you go. We got another set of holes on the back side, and these are the ones that we're looking for. So technically, there would be four holes perpendicular to the deck. So now we can move to the front, and I can show you what marks you need to look for on the cam phasers. So on the left cylinder head, the marks that we need to look for are going to be arrows. We want these arrows to be pointing towards each other. And we're probably going to have to rotate these slightly so that we can get that wedge or locking tool in there. But on the left side, you're looking for arrows. Let's jump over to the right side and see what the difference is. Now on the right side, same thing again. We've got the four holes perpendicular to the deck. But the marks on the front are going to be different. Now on the right side cam phasers, we're going to be looking at different markings. We still got the arrows, but they're pointing outward. We're looking right here in the center. There are two lines, and those lines need to be kind of pointing towards each other. Again, we may have to rotate this slightly to get that wedge in there. But the markings on the right side are going to be lines. Markings on the left side are going to be arrows. And the key thing is make sure all four holes on your camshafts are pointing directly 90 degrees from the deck, and you'll know you're just about right on. Now that locking wedge that we're using for the left side, the part number is 10202-2. It actually has the word left on there. We're going to be doing it with the writing facing up. Now you're going to try to slide it in between the two sprockets of cam phasers and try to slide it up in there. Now there's a possibility it may not be exactly still lined up. You can use a crescent wrench. There are little cutouts here on the camshaft where it will actually fit on. That way if you need minor adjustments, so be it. You can also rotate that crankshaft if you need to. But once you've got it all lined up, it's just going to slide into place. Now the special tool for locking the right side cams is tool number 10202-1 and it has the word right on it. It looks identical to the one on the left, but the actual spacing of these teeth right here are slightly different. So that's why there's a right side and a left side. Again, the writing faces up when you're inserting it. So now that we've got everything timed up properly, what we're going to do next is we're going to paint some reference marks both on the chain and the cam phasers as well as the camshafts. Right here we've got these deep grooves on both of the phasers. We're going to put a little paint in there. And then directly above it on the chain link, we're going to paint those as well. So that way if anything moves during the removal or installation, we'll know and we can correct it. And I also want to point out some key areas on the camshaft that I like to put some paint marks. Now before we go adding any paint marks, we need to clean the surface off. There is a nice cut of oil on here because remember this is under the valve cover so oil does get splashed on it. Just going to hit with some brake clean. That way we got something for the paint to stick to. And once that dries, we'll come back and put our marks. Now personally I like to use a bright color, an orange or a yellow. Something that's going to pop, it's going to stand out. Now these deep grooves, they're not going anywhere, but I'm still going to put a little bit of paint on the edge just so I can see it quickly. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that link directly above. I'm going to paint in that entire link. And once it dries, I may come back and put some more paint as well. Remember, this is just to kind of let us know if things move during reinstallation. So that way we know and we can address it before we put everything back together. Now we're going to repeat this on the opposite side as well for the exhaust cam and then we'll move over to the back side of the camshafts as far as the phasers and I'll show you some reference marks to put there as well. Now on the back side of the cam phasers you've got a series of dots that kind of line up. One dot's on the cam phaser, one dot's on the camshaft so that way you can visually see where they need to line up so when you're going to reinstall it. We don't necessarily need to put paint marks there but I do like to reference where those dots are to the upper cam bearing cap. So that way I know that the camshaft is rotated properly and ready to go for the cam phaser to be installed. So that's what we're gonna put a paint mark on because it is different between the two cams where they're positioned. So if we look at the intake cam, we can see that the two dots line up with the center of the cam bearing cap. Just gonna put a reference mark. But if you jump over to the exhaust cam, you can see that's not the case. It's just before the center. So it's key right here for me to know where it's going to be positioned. That way I can quickly reference where to rotate the camshafts because we will be spinning these about 30 degrees towards the center of the engine. That way we can put it into a rest position. We can take the cam bearing caps off and things are easier for removal and installation. So again, these will be rotated slightly. So that's why it's important here to know where they need to go so that we can line up the cam phasers that already have the chain still on them. So now we're ready to go ahead and break the oil control valves loose. These are those big 
36 millimeter bolts that go through the phaser into the camshaft and that's what attaches them. We're not gonna take them off, we're just breaking it loose. That's the main reason why we've got the wedge in place. We've still got tension on the chain and we're gonna be dealing with that in just a few minutes. But for now, let's just go ahead and break them loose so we can actually back them off by hand when we're ready. And these things are torqued down to over 100 foot-pounds, so it will take a little bit of force get them broke loose. But once you do, you can basically start backing them off by hand. But again, keep it in place till we're ready. Now the whole reason for the special tools is so that we don't have to disassemble the front of the engine to get to the tensioners. Some are buried further down inside the cover, some of them are just below the surface. But again, there's a lot of stuff you got to take off and depending on the vehicle, you may have to drop the oil pan to get to some of the front fasteners. If you're just doing one cylinder side as far as the left side, you're still going to take the right side valve cover off anyway. And there's different accessories down the side that have to be removed. And depending on the vehicle it's in, some of this stuff may be hard to get to. But not in this case. I'm going to take it off just to show you. You don't have to do that. But again, I want you to see how these tools work. And that brings us to the end of part one of this series. Now, at the end of this video, there's going to be some links, and one of those is part two. So make sure you click it and check it out. Now, at this point, if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up on YouTube. Don't forget, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you've got any comments or suggestions about anything you've seen so far in this video, you can leave something in the comments below, or you can email me at david at motorcitymechanic.com. If this is the first time you've seen one of my videos, hit the subscribe button and also the bell icon. So that way you get notified of any upcoming videos. Last but not least, if you like to shop on Amazon, which everybody does, there's a link below. Click on that link and make that your Amazon homepage. And anytime you buy something, you will help support this channel. Again, everybody, thanks for watching and make sure to watch part two.